Hey guys, welcome to another cabin video. I don't know about you, but I'm super excited about this one because we're gonna be having date night at the cabin. No kids involved. That's right, Courtney's gonna be coming out on the weekend. So I got a ton of work to do to get ready. This video is sponsored by Epic Provisions. They've been a great sponsor to this channel. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. And then we're gonna bring you along on the process of getting ready to have a special guest, my wife, out to the cabin overnight. Let's jump into the cabin and let you know what this video is all about. I'm not sure if you guys have ever had the Epic uh, bars before, but uh, they have a dried fruit mix bar too, which is excellent. If you ever tried that, go out and look at them. It's super easy to order these things. Go to Amazon, Amazon Prime. The best part about Epic is they actually care about what and where these ingredients are procured. They care about making sure that the ingredients that go into these bars are ethically sourced. And that matters to me, and I think it matters to you too. I've got a couple bars delivered to me. I've got the venison, sea salt, and pepper. I asked for the venison because obviously I'm not that good at getting venison this year. So we're gonna give that a go. We also got the bison, uh, uncured uh, bacon and cranberry. I tried to pick the more exotic ones. You can get the chicken one. There's a chicken one for you guys who don't like the exotics, the bison, the venison. The chicken is, I think, one of the number one best sellers. Loving the mixture in this bison. Loving the cranberry, loving the sweetness and the meat and the fat. It's a perfect blend in my opinion. Super convenient to order on amazon.com or the Amazon app. Have the Apple Barks delivered right to your door at a convenient, easy time for you. That makes sense. Use Amazon subscribe and save. You're gonna save 5% when you subscribe and save, up to 15% when you subscribe and save with order of at least five items. Order directly online. Everything's gonna be down there in the description. So there's no confusion. There's no antibiotics, 100% grass fed, no stimulants. Guys, if you care about what goes into your body, Epic bars are for you. And uh, give Epic an order because they're a great sponsor to our channel and they make a really awesome bar. All right guys, now that we're filled up, our belly's full, let's get to work. We've got a ton of work to do to get ready for date night. If we're gonna do a date night, we gotta do it properly. I'm no expert on date nights, but what I do know is it involves a certain amount of romance, a certain amount of relaxation, a certain amount of good company. Not necessarily ranked in that order. But I like to put a different spin on things. So what I'm going to do is collect some wild meat. I believe that romance starts with wild meat, as any woodsman believes. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up a little bit of an enticer to get our wild meat moving again. Sometimes when you need to get some action around the wild meat situation, you gotta get things primed. So I've got a sack of seed and I got a huge mess of nuts. So we've got nuts and seeds. We just need our wild meat to come in. So the nuts and the seeds should do the trick. Are there even any deer around anymore? I mean, we'll check around for tracks, see what's going on, but I'm losing hope on that. So I'm gonna take your suggestion, guys. You guys said, you know what, put some corn out. You'll have deer in no time. So I'm gonna put the trail camera out here. We're gonna monitor this over the next couple of days. And every time I come in and check in here in preparation for the big date night, we'll check to see what's going on. That's the best way. So let's get the trail camera set up. We'll let this place cool off. We'll sit, over, we'll sit up with the cabin a little bit, see if a squirrel comes in, if a squirrel comes in, all the better. That's where we're gonna be our wild meat. I think Courtney will like that. What do you think? This is just regular whole corn. I read a little bit on the internet. I've never tried to entice deer or squirrels to come in, but everybody said that if you use cracked corn, the birds are gonna be all over it. And we've got some turkey in here, so I'm thinking the turkeys are probably gonna check this out. I don't know if they're gonna like the whole corn, but I know the deer will like this, and this is meant for cattle. It's not a complete diet, but we're not here to feed the animals. We're here to attract them. This will be our contribution back to the environment. We're not gonna get every squirrel that comes in and steals a kernel of corn. You know what guys, I was gonna try to get that possum that's been coming in. 
but then it got cold. You know what happens to a possum tail when it gets really cold? Nothing good. That's why you don't see too many possums around here. But that possum's probably not active anymore. So what are we left with? Raccoon, deer, squirrel. But I think our best bet, squirrel. And we're all set to go. This is gonna definitely get our wild meat fired up. There we go. Now we're all settled in. I'm hunting like an old man or smart man. Maybe old and smart. Maybe that's the ticket. Let's get all loaded up here. All right, now we're hunting or waiting around. Now, I don't know too much about women, but what I do know is you can't depend on somebody else's wild meat to satisfy your wife. You got to bring the wild to them. Sea salt, celery powder, cracked pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. Nothing crazy. That's good. While we're chewing on some venison, let's go check out the uh, trap and the trail camera and see what's going on down there. There was some activity last time when the coyote went through. Mark from Growing Up Coyote suggested that I open up the advanced trap so that animals can actually walk in it and walk through it. And then maybe they'll become more accustomed you know, to thinking that it's safe. So that when we do finally close it off, you know, at some point, if we're trying to trap a coyote or a raccoon or something like that, and they feel safe to go through it. There, now anything that wants the food that's in there can have access to it. Peek at this trail camera. So let you guys know what's out here. The battery's still at 50%. 50% when I put it out here originally. Oh, there's another coyote coming through in the middle of the night. Uh, turkey, there's always lots of turkeys coming through here. And then this is before the snow, so we've got a little, looks like a cottontail. That's what the fox is looking for, the cottontails. And then Mr. Possum, Mr. Possum probably won't come back until he's uh, defrosted. <laughs> he's not gonna be walking around too much in the snow. So we got this set back up and we'll let it run for a little bit longer. We've got a couple more days till date night, so we'll see if we can't get any more wild game activity. Wild meat, wild game. Do you think Courtney would eat a coyote? I don't think Courtney would eat a coyote. We gotta get something better than that. Maybe we should switch over and get a cottontail. Get set traps for that, for sure. Well, about 30% of the time when I've gone across the property on the far side to hunt deer or squirrel even, I've come across this little part in the trail where there's an overhanging cedar. A uh, cottontail has taken the liking to this little spot. It's got lots of look, it's got lots of cover. It's got places for it to hide and uh, I've never been ready for it. I've always kind of been taken by surprise. Uh, cottontails are a lot different than snowshoe hare. Snowshoe hare will bolt and then they'll stop. And then if you're careful and you track slowly, you'll usually be able to sneak up on them again if you don't spot them first. But snowshoe hare turn white in the winter, so they rely on the camouflage. Cottontail hare, cottontail rabbits, not hare, are the opposite. They don't turn white in the winter, so they don't rely on the camouflage. What they do rely on is their ability to run. And they run, and they run, and they run, and you never quite catch up to them. So we're gonna sneak around the bend here. All right, here we come. Right up to the spot here now. Let's see what we can find. Well, he's not home today. Go figure, there's my luck. As soon as I'm ready for him, he's not home. I was thinking about bringing some apples out. I think that'd be a nice treat for the cottontail. Put some apples out here, might be a nice treat for me too. Might attract more than one cottontail, or I might just get that one cottontail next time. So maybe it's not nice. Maybe it's like underhanded and mean and cruel and unusual. Well, maybe, but it's also part of survival. So if you don't have your edge, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna survive. You gotta be a little bit tough. A little bit nice. Well, don't you know, we got some more snow. I figured I gotta do some more work for this date night thing. Can't just show up, can you? But uh, Mark from Growing Up Gowdy gave me a call and he said, there's a dead buck somewhere on the property. Another hunter that was hunting at the back 40 shot a deer and didn't find it. So we're gonna try to look for it. See if we can't find something. It's been about four or five days. Chances are the coyotes got to it, but you never know. And we also got to check to see our trail camera, find out what kind of activity we've got going on down there. If I don't end up getting a wild animal 
for this squirrel or a rabbit. I've got a backup plan, so you have to stay tuned. I think Courtney's gonna be thrilled about it. <laughs> Probably not thrilled, but you know what I mean. So I, there's lots of tracks over here though. Uh, looks like quite a bit of rabbit tracks. Oh yeah, they've been pretty busy in this neighborhood here. I have to keep our eye out, see if we can't spot something. Oh yeah, they've been all over this thing. All over it, tracks all up and down the tree like crazy. The trail camera over here on that tree there facing this way will tell the complete story. But I see tracks all back in here. Well, we might have to sit here later in the day after we do some scouting and see if we can't track a meal down. I'm pretty sure if I sit quietly on the front porch there, I'll be able to see something. I'm, uh, I gotta check the camera now. I gotta see what's going on. Playback. We got 92 impressions. <laughs> Holy smokes. Well, I'm not gonna be able to look through all of them. Yep, there's a black squirrel in there. It's probably a bunch of birds. I gotta make sure I keep this topped up so that we have enough corn to last and it doesn't go dry. We don't, that's the last thing we want to do. So probably I'll top, oh, there's a black squirrel again. Oh yeah, there's a definitely a resident black squirrel, but it is there regularly. Man, if I sit quietly, I have my job done and we can have some fresh squirrel. I'm pretty satisfied that we have quite a bit of activity here. Mostly squirrel, which is exactly what we're going for. You've already eaten one of each? Yeah, I have. Well, check, check the fat content on it. So this one has three grams of total fat. What does that one have? Mm, up here, fat content. Up here, total, total fat, fat content. Eight. Eight grams. So there's almost three times as much fat in that one. So you can compare the two. You want me to do both? Well, you can, yeah. I got a whole box. I got two whole boxes. D dive in there. Which one did you get, the bison? I got bison right now. Yeah. It smells really good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, eh? I can already tell you I'm gonna like that one better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably because I like sea salt and pepper. So you're not big on that. One. I like that one better. Yeah, it, I could taste it was fattier. Mhm. Mm so it was it was like I don't know. See, to me, it's easier to eat. Mm -hmm. I like fatty stuff. So I'm not a huge cranberry fan though. No, okay, that's why. I like this you one like better. That one better? <laughs> yeah. So there you go, guys. Two different flavor palettes, two different preferences. So I mean, either one's good. I. <laughs> Yeah, if you gave me either one of those on its own, I'd be it'd be fine. But I like the fat content. Um, you know, if burning tons of calories out in the woods, you need the fat content. We've got standing corn over here. I should be hunting over here, Mark. <laughs> there it should be. Instead of on the other side. We got a bunch of tracks up here. We're following. Looks like two or three sets, random sets. Anyway, not sure if these are coyote or deer because they're kind of snowed over. It's harder to tell once they get even just a little bit. That looks like maybe a deer here. That would be a deer. It's got two, yep. two little claws. Mid-season, late season, this is where you want to be. Up, tucked up in this corner. Right in this corner is where I would want to be. You still got to catch them when they're not totally nocturnal though. Which is always the case. Especially as the season goes on. You can see there's a gap between the two cornfields. So they'll make, make their way between those two. This will be standing for another probably month or so until it dries out completely. Mark's got the 22. He's looking out for squirrels. <laughs> see if we can't pick one off. See where the deer might be coming through here. They obviously don't like to go through burdock just any more than we do. It's tons of shocks here. Way more activity <laughs> on this farm than the other home farm. Way, way more. Like, look how much, look how many tracks are just coming out in here and nibbling on green stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, here too. Coming through here. Same you got to know where this trail goes to. Yeah, but we'll be able to find it because I bet you it goes right up to, because there's a clear, nice, trail that's you know four foot wide they want to know where they're coming from yeah. because if they're an hour back right there's a squirrel here shoot it gotta stop though he's going too fast <laughs> plump yeah, I know <laughs> that's why I wanted him Oh, well, he's still there. He just keeps going. He's, he's he keeps going. He's way up here. I think he went back in his home. When you're on the ground, the squirrels just run like heck. But when you're sitting in your tree stand, they'll come and they'll get within like 15 feet of you and just stare at you until you move and then just start chirping away. <laughs> Here's a spot where a squirrel's been working away at some corn. He's got little pieces there. Probably stuff his mouth full. 
or grab the whole cob and take the cob back. But the cobs are heavy for the squirrel, so they prefer to take about half of it. Here's a turkey track. You can tell it's a turkey track, but it's got three toes, and the big toe is always the biggest one. That's how you know it's a turkey. This is what raccoons do to a cornfield. This is not supposed to be all knocked down. It's all, it's all pulled down by the raccoons. And they'll just come in from back in here. Come in here and feed at night. Nobody knows what's going on. They get fat. You're essentially only after the cob with this strain of corn. Yeah. It's just grain corn. The rest is all waste. And all of that. You're not getting a thing off of that. It's all waste. The squirrel's standing up there. And we're checking to see if there's any any activity whatsoever for deer. Uh, not a whole lot. It's most, mostly centered around the corn over there. There's a couple random tracks. It almost looks like it could be coyote, it could be deer, it could be anything, but it's not a lot of recent ones. You got one going by? <laughs> one deer track? That looks like a coyote maybe. Really? Yeah, it's got a, it's a round ball. Round ball foot, no toes. Okay. Coyote. If it's a round stubby without, and you don't see the toes, I just go with coyote. But uh, it walked right walk great past the stand anyway. Mostly coyote stuff down in here. We gotta start switching over. A lot of coyotes. Just found the perfect spot to hunt coons. I think this is probably one of the trees that Jeremy was begging me to come out and run the call on the Willits Living Challenge. and didn't ever get around to it. But you can see up there, there's, I don't know if you can see from that angle, maybe from this angle here. You guys see that hole up in the tree there? Well, that's a perfect spot for the raccoon. And I don't know if you noticed, but behind me is the spot where they had knocked down all the corn over here. So we got to try that. Next week is the only window we got left because uh, it's supposed to be a little bit of a uh, fall and the raccoons will probably come out and grab a bite to eat. So we sit up here uh, uh, late in the evening and run that call, sit on that stump over there. Yeah, we came across a really good bunch of deer sign and then it came up in the bush here. We're like, oh, okay, we'll follow it back. And then we never cut the trail over here. Well, they're not, they're not hanging around here. They're probably still in the corn, which is obviously, it's hard, you can't hunt the corn. I mean, you can hunt the corn, but not easily. So what are we gonna do? We have to wait for the corn to come down, which is gonna be another month. And then when the corn comes down, they don't have nothing to eat. Back to the cranberry. Cranberry bison. Shooting down here, and then try and catch them drinking there or there. Because those cameras have a pretty wide angle, right? Those brownings. And they have a long distance trigger. 50 yards? 50 feet or something. Maybe 50 yards. 85 feet. Yeah, that's what it is. 85 feet. There's like no tracks in the woods. They're all kind of on the edge of the corn or in the corn. So a big shout out to the dugout duty supplied our aerators. We're at the pond now. We want to see how things are going and they're going pretty good. The aerator was just working and just got, it's, it's overcast right now. I'm surprised it's working at all, but it's keeping this area open and it's going to keep the water aerated pretty much all winter and it'll keep it, uh, keep our fish nice and healthy. I don't want to add more rocks, we just took them all out of here. <laughs> we want to know if it's safe or not. Oh yeah, you can totally run across there. Here, I'll hold your camera. You can feel it moving. That looks pretty thick, man. Got a couple rocks here. Test this ice out. Whoa, I felt that one. <laughs> yeah, you still got to be careful out here. Oh, yeah. It's a little early to be confident about the ice. You see there's open spots over in the corner over there. Oh shoot, oh! <laughs> I felt the ice drop. <laughs> Did you feel it? <laughs> when you threw it, I felt the ice drop. No, really. This is the this is the the pot that's kind of worrying because like we we would want ice fish here. This is where we've been feeding them. Whether there's enough ice there, I don't know. It's pro probably fine. <laughs> You're gonna test it out. Mark? Go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, go for a walk. Here, I'll hand you the camera then. Okay. Uh, is that slush on the top? Yeah. That's not nearly as thick over here. You gonna come get me if I fall in? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna try a rock first. Yeah, I would. <laughs> More solid than I thought. Yeah, no, I don't know. I actually thought that rock was gonna go through. It's a little denty. Yeah. I don't know. No, there's water coming through there. Yeah, that went through. That's only like two <laughs> inches of bad ice, I think. But you know what will work? The kayak. Mm hmm. We just put the kayak out here, drill some holes, and fish off the kayak. Yeah. Given the number of fish that are in here, we should be able to uh, catch a fish and get out of here. I don't know. It sounds like an adventure to me. Mm -hmm. Could we'll, be a cold one. We'll see if it happens. Yes.
Should we be wearing a life jacket? in the water over here. Yeah, she's moving a bit. Just build the confidence. Build confidence up on here a little bit. <laughs> Jeez, that's like, that's an inch of really crappy ice. Oh, we should have brought the fish feed out. Chum the water with the fish feed. You feed them though, they're not biting your worm. That's <laughs> true. I don't see any down there. They're probably all over this thing now. Yeah. All right, well. I do sight fishing here. Yeah, you can see right to the bottom. Oh, oh yeah, easily. Yeah. Oh, there's a fish. He's looking at it though. Small one though. I don't want to catch this. Oh, don't go away. He, he ate the sinker. <laughs> Little one there. Mark's got a uh, fly on right now. So I try to imitate the pellet, fly, pellet feed because they're hitting the sinker instead of the bait. They're not eating the worms at all. Did you have it? I thought so. I, it felt, it looked like you had him. Yeah, well he didn't, he didn't bite down though was the problem. I had one fish on, got him about a foot and a half from the surface, and he bent the hook because the hook was just a little bit on the thin side. So it's not working very well. They just want to eat the uh, weight. So we'll have to try again in a different fashion, I think. Wait till the water is not froze over. Hit the fly? Hit the fly, yeah. It just nosed it. Go away, little guy, go away. Like you got to set that hook right away. You gotta sting them just like a fly fish would. As soon as he grabs it, you gotta pop him. Man, these fish have thrown us for a oh. week. Miss them? Yeah, they're not gonna hold on to that because it doesn't taste like feed. I thought about taking a fly and putting it in the feed and just letting it uh, absorb all those oils. But of course, eventually it's gonna wash off. For a time, it's gonna smell like pellet feed. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Mark had to go home, so he can't join me for some homemade chicken noodle soup. Courtney actually made this for me. So that's a special treat for me. Get the stove fired up. We'll get our noodle soup rocking. I'm gonna add a little bit more water because it's kind of dried out. Well, it's actually kind of frozen solid. We need a warm meal in us because I'm gonna spend the rest of today, well, until I get a couple of squirrels knocked down. I'm gonna peek out here every once in a while at the bait pile, and if a squirrel comes by, I'm gonna knock it down because we gotta get some wild meat. But tomorrow's my last day to get prepared for this. Otherwise, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. No, I, I do, I have a backup plan, and it's a good one. It's a funny one. I think I'm gonna do that anyway, the backup plan, but I'd like to get some fresh meat because I, I really think Courtney deserves that. So we're gonna to try to make that happen. I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put my hours in. All that scouting for deer, we have some ideas on the deer front. I think Mark's gonna move some tree stands and try a different spot. I don't know. I was really hoping that squirrel stand would pan out, but no such luck at the squirrel stand. No tracks around it. Not worth hunting. Maybe I'll get a deer to come to the corn pile. Probably not. You guys saw how much corn's out there. Why are the, why would a deer come to my corn pile? Maybe once all the corn's been taken down, and it's all been picked off. Maybe they'll come in. We'll hunker down, see if we can't get a squirrel to come in. This is really going to hit the spot. There's a couple of ways you can warm up to get the fire going. And also just eat a warm meal. You guys looking forward to the date night? I'm looking forward to the date night. We had uh, Courtney out here before 
but last time uh, Holden came, so this time Holden's not going to be coming. He's going to be staying at a friend's house, so he's going to be having his own date night. I'm sure he's going to have a blast. He's only done a couple sleepovers before with his friends, so I'm sure he's. He actually told me the other day he's really looking forward to it. And uh, if you've been married a long time, you know it's nice to have evenings to yourself. And no matter how long you've been married, you should definitely take time to continue to do that. It will make a big difference in your life, I'm sure, in your relationship. Every once in a while, I'm gonna check, see if we have any squirrel activity. It's tough getting them moving. It's tough getting any animal to move in the winter like this. Well, I've been sitting here for about an hour and there's nothing moving. The squirrels don't like to move around in the snow I'm gathering. But even though there's tons of tracks, they must just be moving in the morning, maybe morning and evening. I've got a few more minutes, I'll wait, see what happens. Well, we're gonna have to rely on spoils we collected earlier. Sure like to treat my wife to something though. Luck's not my favor this time. It's pretty quiet out here. heck is going on? <laughs> I missed like three times. Uh, it's a long shot. Uh, it's got to be 35, 40 yards. So if I'm off by an inch or two, gonna miss that. Squirrel's not a big target, man. And they move like crazy. <clears throat> man, 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 man. I just ran up the hill inside of the gun and it's, it's, a, it's about like that. But uh, at 40 yards, it's like, like that. So that's enough to miss a squirrel. This is the third day trying to get a squirrel. It's a lot more sporting than you would think. Although it's not a sport, I'm actually looking for some food. So when I got here, that squirrel went up the tree and then he barked at me for a half an hour. I know because I timed it because I want to learn a little bit more about squirrel behavior. So I want to see how long it would take that squirrel to relax. It was 30 minutes, climbed down the tree and I uh, had three shots. <laughs> This, it's about 45 yards here, so it's a long shot for my Ruger. I mean, I should hit it, but anyway, I missed three times. And then it came back in over here to uh, my left side, went halfway to the bait, and then it decided it was going to take off again. And then it came back a third time, and it just went to the corner there, and then that was it. It took off after that. <laughs> it grabbed like a couple kernels of corn and, and booted it. So it's definitely they're coming from a long way away. Can you say something? I just did. What'd you say? Shouldn't we? Um be on the camera together. There you go. Better? Yep. <laughs> Get a fire going. It's cold. Sure is. 